Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, the Long Island frauditor finds out he's not a real journalist and he has a hissy fit. So let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This is Long Island Audit here. Back again with another video. Coming to you live from an undisclosed location. I hope everyone's doing okay. What do you mean by undisclosed location? Are you afraid that now that you are a defunct frauditor, that people are going to come after you with pitchforks and torches? You know, that might actually be entertaining right there. Even more so than regular content. Um, I probably shouldn't be making this video, honestly. You know, I have a lot of court proceedings coming up. My jury trial in Danbury is coming up. If you shouldn't be doing it, then why the hell are you doing it to begin with? Yeah, yeah, I hear you guys. I know what he is. You don't have to tell me. He's a desperate attention whore. That's what he is. Up and, you know, but in the spirit of transparency and accountability, I just can't keep my mouth shut. Wow, you're already piling on the bullshit it's gotta be 10 feet deep already i mean you call it accountability but what from what i see all you do is lie i'm not gonna disrespect any judges but i'm gonna call them out on what i believe is the truth let's get into it all right guys so basically I'll give you guys a little bit of a background here and make sure i can see the comments i can see all your comments um to give you guys a little background here i'm trying to make this live pretty quickly um you know as you all know my upcoming trial for danbury connecticut for four misdemeanors and two infractions is coming up shortly i don't know the exact date my next court date is october 12th which is next week so i will be there for that um, i have to be there in person my last court date was rescheduled um, because of the state's attorney you know they like to delay these things but um if you're not familiar with the danbury case you you should be and i linked the video in the description of this video right below the like button so hit the like button support the channel make sure that we're exposing all these tyrants and corrupt public officials everywhere but um yeah so i left the video so you can get up to date basically 20 years ago i'd be dead with my teeth missing at the library then city hall i was arrested for criminal trespassing in a public building when no one asked me to leave don't know how a judge found probable cause uh breach of the peace you guys know I don't breach the peace or act disorderly. But anyway, that trial's coming up, right? So I decided that I was going to follow through the proper channels and do it the right way and, you know, um, seek permission from the court, from the chief court administrator for the whole state of Connecticut. And his name is, just so I can get it for you, his name is uh, Patrick Carroll. He's the chief. He's a judge. He's the chief judge and the court administrator for the for the state of Connecticut. Are we trying to play a Jedi mind trick, or is this just a case of cherry-picking your arguments, going full quote mining? Yeah, going full quote mining. Let's take a look at what the article actually says. So she sued the judge in charge, because of COVID-related issues, because she couldn't get her license reinstated after the one-year suspension due to COVID. Dude, you're not a journalist. You're a fraud. We'll talk more about him in a second. So I reached out to the court administrator's office to you know, seek permission to film and... Um, I'm going to read you the email chain right here because I th I want to record my trial. You know, Berwin didn't have a problem with me recording. The judge in Berwin didn't have a problem with me recording my trial at all. And that's what made the state's attorney dismiss the charges. Yeah, just because Judge A over here lets you do a thing in his courtroom doesn't mean Judge B over there is going to let you do it in his courtroom. Uh-uh, doesn't work that way. In fact, that almost sounds like a childlike mentality he's got right there. I'm going to read these emails to you. So I reached out to what, what's called external affairs. That's the email that I was given. So seeking permission to record jury trial, Danbury, Connecticut, 
to whom it may concern. I was given the email address as a point of contact to obtain permission to record my upcoming gr- criminal jury trial in Danbury, Connecticut. The date of said trial is to be determined. The docket number is I am a defendant in the case, and I'm also an independent journalist disseminating matters of public interest to the public at large. My news company, Long Island Noted Inc., I am incorporated. I do have a company. Has a total of 500,000 subscribers across all my platforms, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Um, please get back to me ASAP with any different, any additional information or steps I need to take to approve my request for recording my upcoming trial. You know, Sean Paul Reyes. Not a big deal, right? You know, why would it be a big deal? What do they have to hide? Obviously, everything. Watch the video in the description. So a uh, Michael Snyder, who is the assistant or a trainee at the administrative department at the chief court administrator's office and uh, he got back to me right away i must say he was very responsive good afternoon mr reyes we have received your inquiry and to proceed forward we need you to fill out the attached application authorization form to become a credentialed media member and email it back to me media as defined by the connecticut practice book means any person or entity i am a person and i also have an entity of a company long island audit inc that is regularly engaged in gathering and dissemination of news that is approved by the office of the chief court administrator. How is standing in a room, filming walls, and arguing with security guards considered to be collection and dissemination of information to the public? Come on now. That's merely creating chaos for clicks. It brings me to a quote from eric bischoff controversy creates cash and that's exactly what you're doing creating controversy rather than news in addition to the form please provide any links and or websites that show how you fit the connecticut practice standard also practice book standard also please illustrate in detail how long island audit disseminates their news regularly so I disseminate news to all of you on a weekly basis. Um, in total, we have a total across all platforms, probably around 10 million views every single month. Now, for perspective, everyone, for perspective, the, t- the, in total, the total population of Connecticut is like 3.4 million, I believe. 3.4 million, that's their total population there. So even the most successful news company in Connecticut, news outlet in Connecticut, Are they going to get 10 million views every single month? I disseminate information all the time. But does that make me a journalist? No, it doesn't. Nor do I claim to be a journalist. I haven't gone through the ethics training. I haven't gone through the classes. And for that matter, neither have you. With a population of 3.4 million people, probably not. But anyway, so external affairs. This is all the best, Mike. External affairs division, Connecticut Judicial Branch. In Hartford, Connecticut, and he sent me this form. Uh, Let me see if I can get it real quick for you guys. Yeah, he sent me this form. Look how, look how, look how this, uh, how silly this form is. State of Connecticut Judicial Branch, Judicial Branch, excuse me, person, entity, organization, your address, telephone, email, and you sign it. That's it. One page form. You guys see it right here in front of you. This is the application. Completely ridiculous. Anyway, let's go back. So I email him back with the, I attach the form. Thank you for your prompt response. Please see attached application form as below. Also below are links to all the platforms that I regularly post matters of public interest to hit the like button. If this is matters of public interest to you, what I do with the, the information and the videos that I make and is that hit the like button. If you think that's interesting to you. So I know how many people are actually interested. How about that? So anyway, just to give you an idea, I go to public, I even told them what I do. I go to public government offices and show the process of doing FOIA requests as well as the reaction of public officials have with me exercising my freedom of press right. I also do ride alongs with police departments um, to help bridge the gap between law enforcement and the public. And I also do First Amendment trainings at, at these police departments. I disseminate those videos to the public as well. I also have someone who works for me just to seem more official. I am sure there will be other journalists emailing your office, and we'll talk about this at the end of the video. I'm sure there'll be other journalists emailing your office to request to record my trial. I have no objection as the defendant. Oh, come on, dude. That doesn't make you a journalist. None of that makes you a journalist. Ride-alongs don't make you a journalist. 
That shitty seminar you did sure as hell didn't make you a journalist. And that's been debunked countless times. So, and then I sent him links to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, website, my Instagram, Twitter. Thank you for your time and consideration. If you need anything else, please let me know. Sincerely, Jean Paul Reyes. Um, then he says, uh, he, emails me, he, email, he emails me back and he says, good afternoon, Sean Paul. Thank you for submitting your application as well as providing additional details. Your application is still pending with the office of the chief court administrator. In addition, I want to follow up with your request. The court is very strict. Would you be able to abide by any and all court rules? Yeah, we all know you're not a journalist because a journalist would not be getting so butthurt about these questions. They would answer them and accept whatever the response was. That is called professionalism. Now, do you think that if someone from CNN Someone from MSNBC, ABC, Fox News, any local media submitted this request to the chief administrator for the Connecticut judicial system. Do you think that they would have gotten back an email that says the court is very strict? Would you be able to abide by any and all court rules? Are you kidding me? That's, that's like really discrimination against me because of who I am and what I do. I hold the government accountable. Just because I hold the government more accountable than ABC, Fox News, and MSNBC, and CNN all put together, you know. You are so late. I can't follow any. Can you? Would you be able to follow all and any court rules at my trial? I don't want to break any rules. I'm just there to. I'm there to defend myself against these unjust charges. I'm not there to act a fool. I just want to put a camera on a tripod in the corner of the courtroom. What rules would I need to follow? Ridiculous, guys. This is ridiculous. <laughs> any and all court rules. I should have. I see the comment right there. I should have asked him. What are the? What are all these court rules that I would have to follow? So I emailed them back again. I'm just trying to be nice. I'm trying to get approved to, to record my trial because I think that will help me immensely. Um, good afternoon, Michael. Thank you for sitting my, submitting my application to the Office of the Chief Administrator. I appreciate it. I have a question. When you say the court is very strict, are you referring to the approval of these types of applications or are you speaking in general? I said, generally speaking, I do understand how strict, court, how strict courts are, generally speaking. Unfortunately, I've been in courtrooms across the Unfortunately, I have been in courtrooms across the country since I started my activism and investigative journalism. In each instance, the case was dismissed. I has I also I have always shown an exemplary record when conforming with court rules and regulations and my behavior. Never have I been held in contempt of court for any reason in any court. Again, they would have never asked that to any other journalist. I have even been granted permission in my previous court proceedings to record my trial with no issues. So, yes, the answer to your question directly is I am 100% confident that I would be more than capable of abiding by any and all court rules. You know, what does that have to do with recording? I'm just trying to put my camera in a corner. <laughs> you can't make this up, man. Oh, you can't make it up. Thank you again for your time and consideration. Then he emails me back. Thank you for your response. Your request is under consideration. I will provide updates as I receive them. So, a couple days go by, I believe. Five days go by. I haven't heard from him. He emails me. Good afternoon, Mr. Reyes. Thank you for taking the time to submit your application. However, the chief court administrator has denied your request to be credentialed as media. Well, you see what happens when you act like a complete jackass on YouTube? You're not going to be welcome at the best parties. Man, it certainly does suck to be in your position, but it couldn't have happened to a nicer asshole.